Welcome to the Sea and Scoot training resource for Mobility Scooter users. The purpose of the training is to highlight the hazards that Mobility Scooter users might encounter whilst out on the road. It should be useful for both new and existing users and we hope that you find this resource to be useful and informative. The video shows you the types of hazards you may face at road crossings and has been informed by research with Mobility Scooter users. Importantly, the video footage we show you is from the perspective of the scooter user. We have identified a range of hazards that scooter users might encounter at road crossings and there is a section on each of them. Within each section, different examples of that hazard will be shown and advice given on how best to handle the situation. The scenarios will always be from the mobility scooter user's viewpoint, either from a camera attached to the front of the scooter, like this, or from eye-tracking glasses worn by scooter users that have a camera in them, like this. As you can see, this perspective allows you to see the head movements made by the user. The coloured dot shows you where the user is looking in the scene. Sometimes we will show both these videos together, where it is useful to see both, with one video shown in a smaller window like this. What is a hazard? A hazard is anything that may cause you to change speed, direction or even stop. So, for example, here as the user approaches the crossing, a road sweeper turns into the road on the left and crosses the user's path. If the user had not seen the road sweeper and they had attempted to cross, there might have been a collision. Hazard types we will now provide examples of particular hazards that you might encounter when you cross a road. Pedestrians. Pedestrians can be a hazard for many reasons. In this section, we will show you some examples of when pedestrians can be a hazard when you are on your scooter. Here you can see the scooter user approaching an unmarked pedestrian crossing. On the left is a car parked on the curb and an A-board that the user has to navigate. The user does this well and approaches the situation slowly and with caution. It is not safe to cross to begin with, so the user slowly approaches the crossing. During this time, a pedestrian appears from behind the user and crosses the road. What do you think happens next in this clip? We will now pause the video for several seconds so that you have the opportunity to decide. As you can see, the user waits at the crossing, and as they are about to cross, another pedestrian suddenly appears from behind and cuts across the scooter user's path. To avoid them, the scooter user has to angle towards another set of pedestrians, crossing from the other side of the road, and has to slow right down in the middle of the road to avoid them. Always be observant and aware of other pedestrians making sure you plan how to cross to avoid them and avoid needing to stop in the middle of the road. Be aware that other pedestrians might not realise that being on a scooter restricts your visibility and restricts your ability to move out of the way. Here we have a scooter user approaching an area where pedestrians are coming off a busy road crossing onto a pedestrian street. The scooter user is crossing the flow of pedestrians. As the user approaches, a pedestrian appears from the right. The pedestrian does not see them forcing the user to stop to avoid a collision. Be aware of pedestrians suddenly appearing from corners and blind spots. They might take longer to see you in a scooter because you are at a lower height. Try to predict when this might happen and reduce your speed appropriately. As the user continues, we see other pedestrians coming from several different directions, some of which are completely unaware of the scooter user's presence. It is important to remain calm in situations like this. Slow down and be observant of your surroundings, making sure you look in all directions. Here you can see the scooter user waiting at a marked pedestrian crossing. The scooter user checks to see whether the lights are on red. Several pedestrians cross the road when the lights are still on red, and as one does so, the scooter user begins to move. They then check the lights and see that they are still on red and so does not cross. Regardless of whether pedestrians cross when the lights are red, do not attempt to do this. It is unsafe and you could potentially not see a car approaching. 
Pedestrians can also easily step back from the road if a car appears, whereas in a scooter this is difficult and takes time, so may result in an accident. The best thing to do is to wait until the lights turn green, just like the user is doing here. Traffic. One of the most dangerous hazards is that of other traffic. In this section we will show you some examples where this is particularly the case. At some crossings, vehicles might come from several different directions. As the user approaches this crossing, we can see that there are three different directions cars may potentially turn in from and cross the path of the user. You can see that the user is being very observant and checking all areas to make sure that it is clear to cross. This is not easy to do when sat in a scooter as often your movement is restricted. Several cars turn in and cross the path of the user from different directions. Once it is clear, the user crosses. As they move towards the central island, a car approaches from the left and a pedestrian crosses from the opposite direction. The car stops to let the user cross. If there is an island, try to use it to pause and recheck if it is still clear before crossing. Try not to rush over and cross in one go, as this is when mistakes can often be made. Take the time to be vigilant. This is another example of a busy T-junction. Here, however, whilst the user looks left and right to check that it is clear and safe to cross, they do not look behind them in their blind spot. This is dangerous as a car could potentially turn in, which could result in a collision. It is more difficult to turn and look behind while sitting on a scooter. If you find it difficult to turn completely, try to position yourself in a way that allows you to safely see all areas before crossing. In this clip, you can see that as the user approaches an unmarked crossing, there is a car parked over the drop curb. Whilst a pedestrian is able to use the main curb, it would not be appropriate for the user to do this as a sharp incline may tilt or jolt the scooter, resulting in an accident. In this clip, the user correctly slows down to determine if there is still sufficient space for them to use the drop curb. Make sure in situations like this you still remember to look to ensure there are no cars approaching and it is still safe to cross. In this instance, it is a one-way road with cars only coming from the left. The user therefore deems it safe to cross. However, if cars were coming from the right, it would have been unsafe to cross because the parked car is obstructing visibility. Remember that as you are lower down in a scooter, your visibility can often be restricted. If unsure of what to do or where cars are coming from, do not risk it. It may be better to find an alternative, safer route or ask someone for help. Crossing design. Sometimes the way in which crossings are designed can make it difficult for mobility scooter users. It is important to think through how best to navigate them. In this section, we show you some examples of how to use crossings. Here, the user approaches the crossing to press the button. As the button is often positioned close to the road, it might mean that your scooter sits very close to the road whilst you wait. In this instance, the user carefully reverses after they have pressed the button, so they are waiting at a safe distance from the road. This is a good strategy to use, especially when waiting at very busy roads. Here we can see a user crossing a marked pedestrian crossing with an island in the middle. The lights turn green and the user begins to cross. As they approach the island in the middle of the road, the lights turn red. However, the user continues to cross the road. When crossing roads with a central island, Always check the lights when you get to the central island. If necessary, wait until the next time the lights turn green again. As a new or existing scooter user, you may be hesitant or nervous about reaching the other side of the road. It is important to make sure you do not rush and give yourself sufficient time to cross the road safely. There are some marked pedestrian crossings where the green man is positioned at an angle that makes it difficult to see. Here, we can see on the right the button press facing towards you, but the green man is facing outwards onto the road. This could be a problem, as if the user decides to wait by the button, once they have pressed it, they're unlikely to be able to see the green man. Try to position yourself at an angle that allows you to see the green man. It would be unsafe to cross if you could not determine when the lights have turned green, 
and copying other pedestrians could be problematic if they have crossed when the lights are still on red. In this clip, we can see the user approaching a marked pedestrian crossing. What do you think happens next in this clip? As we will now see, the scooter user crosses before they get to the crossing, rather than using the marked crossing and designated drop curb. This is dangerous for several reasons. As you can see in the clip, there is an abrupt drop that causes the scooter to jolt. This may be uncomfortable, leading you to take your eyes off the road. It will also mean you have less control of your scooter, and if the drop is on an incline, could lead you to tip the scooter. Also, because scooters are battery operated, a jolt may temporarily disconnect the battery, leading to complete loss of control whilst in the middle of the road. Choosing to cross before the lights also means the scooter user is unable to see whether the lights have turned green and whether it is safe to cross. Crossing before the designated crossing may also make it difficult to get back up on the other side of the pavement. As can be seen in this clip, the user has to drive on the road for some distance before they can get back up onto the pavement using the designated drop curb. Before entering any road, always make sure you have identified the place where you can exit the road. Visibility at crossings. Sometimes at road crossings, you will find that visibility is problematic. In this section, we will show you some examples of where visibility is poor and what to do in these situations. As the user approaches this crossing, you will see a parked car on the left. This is obstructing vision and making it difficult to see whether the road is clear and safe to cross. In situations like this, always be cautious and check the best you can that it is clear. Edge slowly into the road, and if you decide it is unsafe, reverse back. In some situations, you may decide that it is too risky. If so, then it might be better to try and find an alternative, safer route or ask someone for assistance. This is another example of a parked vehicle at a crossing. The user cannot see around this lorry, and the only way of doing so would mean moving to the centre of the road, making it unsafe. In this instance, the user asks another pedestrian whether they would mind going out into the road and checking that it is safe for them to cross. If you feel comfortable doing this, then this could be an option for you if this situation occurs. Alternatively, it might be better to find a safer route. In this clip, a user is approaching an entrance and exit to a car park. The wall surrounding this makes it very difficult to see whether there are any cars coming out of the car park. You can see here that the user does not look either way to make sure that it is clear and safe to cross. Be aware of entrances and exits and always check it is clear to cross before doing so. In this instance, this could have resulted in a serious collision if a car had been coming out of the car park. Stop and wait, look clearly in both directions and then continue to cross when it is clear. Here we can see a user waiting at a marked pedestrian crossing to cross the road before the lights are red. To the left of the user are two pedestrians waiting to cross. The user sits back from the road so that they are not positioned too close to the road. However, pedestrians come and stand in the gap that the user leaves in front of them. Being in a seated position, this makes it very difficult to see whether the lights have turned green. In situations like this, try to remain calm and continue to wait until you can see the lights again before crossing. If pedestrians decide to cross the road, as they do here, do not assume the lights have turned green. In this instance, these pedestrians crossed the road when the lights were still red. If the user had decided to cross with them, they might have been involved in an accident if the car had turned in. Spacing at crossings. Sometimes pedestrian crossings might not have been built with scooters in mind, making them difficult to use. In this section, we will show you some examples of why spacing might be a hazard to you when you are on your scooter. Here we can see a user approaching an unmarked pedestrian crossing with an island in the middle. In some instances, the central island might not be wide or long enough for the scooter to fit on. However, it is difficult to see whether this is the case until you reach the central island. If you get to an island which is small and you feel the scooter will not fit on, do not panic or try to rush across the road, as this is when mistakes can be made. 
Rather, stay calm and position yourself the best you can on the island. Remain vigilant and wait until it is safe to cross before moving off the island again. Sometimes islands at marked pedestrian crossings are wide enough to fit a scooter, but can be difficult to manoeuvre in, as can be seen here. In instances like this, try your best to position yourself so that you can see the lights on the opposite side of the road. If other pedestrians limit your visibility, wait until people have started to cross before you position yourself so that you can check for a green light before crossing. Priority at crossings. Sometimes at unmarked road crossings, it might not be obvious who has priority. However, even at marked pedestrian crossings when priority is clear, drivers may decide not to stop. For example, they might decide not to stop at a zebra crossing or they might go through a red light. In this clip, the user approaches a pedestrian crossing but a car is also approaching on the right. Whilst it is courteous for the driver to stop and wait for you to cross, they might not always do so, as is the case here. Also note that there are pedestrians crossing as the car approaches. In instances like this, do not attempt to cross the road with them. Rather, wait and take your time until you know it is safe to cross. Here, the user is waiting at a marked pedestrian crossing for the lights to turn green. The lights turn green, indicating that it is now safe to cross the road and the user prepares to do so. What do you think happens next in this clip? As we will now see, a car goes through a red light and crosses the path of the user. If the user had of crossed the road, there would have been a serious collision. Always make sure you check it is clear and safe to cross, even if the lights have turned green. Negotiating pedestrian areas. In this clip, we can see a user driving slowly on a busy pavement. What do you think happens next in this clip? As we will now see, the pedestrian directly in front of them suddenly stops and changes direction. Here, the user is watching this pedestrian and so is quickly able to respond by braking. If the user had been going faster and was not paying attention, a collision might have occurred. You can also see from this clip that there are lots of hazards just on the pavement. For example, pedestrians are moving in several directions, a bike also passes the user on the right and a child is running along the pavement. When using the pavement, always remember to drive slowly and observe your surroundings carefully. In this clip, the user is driving along a quiet pavement. What do you think happens next? As we will now see, a bike unexpectedly comes around the corner ahead at a fast speed. This could potentially be very dangerous as it is unlikely that the user would have enough time to react. Here the user sees the bike quickly and moves to the side accordingly, allowing the bike to pass. When approaching a corner or somewhere where visibility is reduced, be prepared for something unexpected to happen like this. Scooters cannot move out of the way quickly, and so being vigilant, planning and modulating your speed appropriately are very important. In this clip, we can see that there are substantial roadworks taking place that cover a large area of the pavement. A walkway has been made for pedestrians, but it is narrow and difficult to negotiate with a scooter. Even if the walkway is clear of pedestrians, the corner makes it impossible to know whether other pedestrians are using the walkway further ahead. There is also a lamppost that the user has to negotiate once they reach the corner. In instances like this, go very slowly and be observant of pedestrians turning in from blind corners unexpectedly. Be patient and wait until it is clear and you can go again if necessary. We hope that you have found this Sea and Scoot training resource useful and informative. The hazards we have talked through are those that have been identified in our research with scooter users. We hope that in watching this, you are more aware of the hazards that you might encounter as a scooter user and that watching footage from the perspective of a scooter user is helpful in getting an understanding of what it might feel like to drive a scooter around a busy urban environment. From everyone on the research team at Nottingham Trent University, 
Thank you for watching.